Hi everyone! In this new class, we're going to show you how to easily automate the process of scheduling meetings with a chatbot. So, let's imagine that we are a SaaS company or a marketing and design agency, for example, and our objective here is not only to schedule meetings, we also need to qualify our leads with some basic questions. So, we can build the whole process using Landbot features such as questions, buttons, and human takeover. And most importantly, we can also use some cool integrations such as the Calendly brick and the email or Slack notification. So, let's get to it! First, we're going to introduce ourselves. So, I'm going to modify here the welcome message. Let's delete the GIF. And then I'm going to say here, Hi there, I'm company X. And I'm going to make it bold. And then I'm going to add another text here with a text, hit the button if you are interested in our services and want to speak um, to us. Let's make this bold. Okay, so I'm going to just change the, the button's design and the text. I'm going to put here, let's do this. And I'm going to add an emoji to this button. Let's just pick the right one for my welcome message. I'm going to go with this one. Let's save it. Then we can ask for the user's name. So I'm going to use here the question name block. And I'm going to change the text to may I ask you what's your name? I'm going to make the name bold and I'm going to save the variable with the default variable which is at name. And here I'm going to add a nice message. Nice to meet you name. Okay, let's place it here. And then right after it I want to use a text block to ask for the company's name. So I'm going to write here, um, and what's your company's name? You see, this is very simple, this is very basic, all these blocks are very easy to use, but they're super helpful when you want to do some lead gen. And let's save here our variable with the name company. Then right next to it, um, we're going to ask for the user's email, which is very important in this case. So. I'm going to just ask what's their email, save the variable in the um, default variable, which is at email. And then I'm going to ask for a little bit more information about my lead. So in this um, text field, I'm going to ask, could you explain briefly um, which kind of project which kind of project did you have in mind? Can you explain briefly which kind of project did you have in mind? So I'm going to save a different variable here named project. It's important to save different variable names for each block. And then I'm going to add a buttons block here. Then I'm going to ask here when the user would like to start a project. So, I'm going to give here the options, it will be immediately, or in one or two weeks, one or two months, or I'm not sure. And I'm going to save the variable from this buttons block, so here I'm going to save it with a different name, which will be urgency. And then. I'm going to use the default output because it doesn't matter to me what option the, the user chooses. And then in the end, I'm going to give the opportunity for the user to speak to one of my agents. So I'm going to ask here, do you want to speak to a sales representative right now? And the options will be speak now to an agent, which will be the chat, or schedule a meeting which will be a call. We're going to give the two options in the buttons block. Let's save here a different variable name for it, which will be a contact choice. For scheduling a meeting, we're going to set up an integration with Calendly. 
Um, before we do it, we obviously need to create an account in Calendly.com. So you can just skip this part if you already have an account in Calendly. Calendly is a meeting scheduler tool, which is easy to use and have a completely free plan. Um, the free plan has a few limitations. For example, you can only integrate uh, one calendar per user. You can create only one event type, but you can schedule unlimited events, which is pretty much what we need for our Landbot account. And to sign up, it's very simple. You just need to enter your email. And once you do it, your dashboard will look pretty much like this. So you can choose the event you want to set up. I'm going to choose this one. Then here you can define the event's name, you can define the location. So I'm going to choose Google Meet so that we can create a link to this meeting in the end. Um, you can add a description instructions. You can define the event duration, the time zone of the event, um, and you can integrate with your calendar. Aside from these availability settings, Calendly is going to recognize if you have busy events on Google Calendar and automatically make you unavailable for meetings at that time. So as you can see here, you can choose the dates, you can save it here, and the last thing we have to do is turn the event on. And that's pretty much it. Then you can integrate it with Landbot. Let's go back to the bot flow and we will continue building now in our bot. Um, the schedule a meeting flow. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna add a brick workaround which is already ready to use. Okay, so let's pull the arrow. You can type in bricks. When you click here, you will open the bricks explorer where you can find many brick workarounds that are ready for you to use, which we built specially for you. So let's click Calendly. Okay, so let's connect it to the flow. And when you click on edit this brick, you will see how it's built from the inside. And as you can see, it is 90% ready to use. There is very little adaptation you need to do here. You don't have to touch the JavaScript blocks, okay? You don't have to do anything there. Um, but you can customize the other blocks. For example, the two first question blocks there, the question name and question email. I will delete them because I have already um, asked for this information in the bot flow. So I'm going to just add a simple message here. It's very important that you start from the start here point in the brick if you decide to customize it. Okay, and connect it to the, to the rest of the flow. Um, I'm also gonna customize the buttons block. So I'm gonna type in a different text here. Please remember you cannot delete this buttons block. Okay. It is necessary to have the JavaScript block working properly. So I'm gonna type here, thank you for scheduling a meeting with us. And I'm going to add two options. One, when the user has already chosen its final uh, meeting date. And in the second one, I'm going to um, give the opportunity for the user to reschedule the meeting. So I'm going to add here, reopen meeting scheduler. Okay, so here on the right side, you will see it's leading to the output. You can edit the name of the output. I'm not going to do it right now, but you could. And the only setup that you really have to do is here at the set variable block. So as you can see on the left side, it has a note that has the instructions on how to do it. So what you have to do, you have to click on it and you have to add your Calendly link. Okay, and you will find this in your Calendly account. So go to your Calendly account, click on account, account settings. And in the account settings, you will find here the option my link. You have to copy this option, my link. Copy this text, paste it here in the value, and you have to create a variable for it. So create it in the string format, save it, and that's it. You have your Calendly integration ready to use. Okay, so once we've set our Calendly integration, let's go back to the bot, and then we're going to build the second part of the flow, which is when the user requires to speak to a live agent, when he clicks on speak now. So we're going to add a human takeover block right after this buttons block, and add this block. What happens when the user reaches the human takeover block? It automatically assigns the conversation to an online agent. So you can select here the online agents that will receive this conversation, or you can just not select any agent in particular. It will be randomly assigned to any online agent. 
So what's interesting of this block is that you can add blocks right after it. So in case there are no online agents, if they are busy or offline, you can continue the flow. So I'm going to add here a Slack notification block and you can add here the channel and you can add the message you will send in the Slack notification. So I'm going to add here the name of the lead that want to speak to us and give a little context um, providing the information that the user has given us. So we have collected in our lead gen bot the company of the lead, the email, the project that they, they would like to develop with us. And you can customize this to fit your needs. Um, you can add the variables, but um, I'm going to show you that. You can also make it bold, for example. Just customize it as you prefer. Okay, I'm going to add this one too. And I think we're good to go. Right, so don't forget to save the block. Okay, so another way you can use to notify your agents that you have a, a lead waiting to talk to us um, is adding a send an email block, but this time you have to use it in the your team mode. So here you can send email. So here you can send an email to your team. So you can see I copied here the, the text from the Slack notification block because I'm that smart and I'm going to paste it here with the same information. So the the name of the lead, the company, the email, the description of the project. Just make sure that you have the variables right, as I'm doing here, okay? Because there I used the variables from the list. Um, and then here you can add the email subject, which I will use the same one as I did in the previous um, Slack notification block. I'm going to write here the email subject and add the emails of my team. So I'm going to add here. All right, and save it. And I'm going to build a flow that is very round up. So I'm going to add here after the email to team block. I'm going to add a buttons block and you will see why. I'm going to add here a message to let my, my leads know that there are no online agents at the moment. So I'm going to give him the option to choose what he wants to do. So I'm going to ask if he wants to schedule a meeting and I'm going to give the options yes or no, thank you. All right, so um, as we have already built the Calendly integration, I'm gonna just connect this option to the Calendly integration so that they can schedule a meeting to speak to us. Or if they say, no thanks, I'm just gonna be cool about it and say, all right, name, goodbye. And that's it. Now we have a very round up flow, so no loose points here. I'm going to add one last thing, which is a Slack notification block that leads from the Calendly integration to the Slack notification. And you can see that I just copied the Slack notification block. I'm just going to change a little bit the message here to say that someone, the name of the lead, has already scheduled a meeting. Okay. And let my agents know when there is a, a meeting scheduled. And then save your bot. And there you have it. Okay, so this is how our bot flow looks in the end. And let's see how it looks like for our final users. Let's test this bot. So um, let's share with a link. All right. So hi there, I'm Company X. And then let's do this. And the user will say, what's his name? It's just Alex. Nice to meet you. The company's name, Alex Bots. My email will be alex at alexbots.com. All right, I will explain briefly that this and that. And when I would like to start, well, I would like to start in one or two weeks. And if I want to speak to an agent, I'm no, I'm going to schedule a meeting. So as you can see here, the Calendly uh, model will pop up and you can schedule a meeting. So meeting with company X, all right? So I can choose here the date and the time that I want it. So let's say 12, um, or whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna say 12 o'clock. Confirm, here you can enter the details for the meeting. Okay, confirm then and schedule the meeting. And as you can see here is the confirmation of the meeting, okay? And then in the end, you can just click on see you there. And goodbye. 
Okay, so this is what happens from the user, from the lead's point of view, right? But in your Calendly account, you will see that the event was created. So from your point of view, this is what happens. Um, the meeting was scheduled with the user. So you will see here all the information that you have previously defined. So it will be updated automatically to your Calendly account. And you will also go to your Google Calendar. So it will update here that you have this meeting with these people and with all the information you have defined, the link to the meeting also from Hangouts. Okay. Um, and also the Slack notification that I have sent um, to my agents right after the meeting was scheduled is here with all the information I have set for it. So the company, email, project description, urgency, everything. And um, one last thing that I want to show you is that you will also get an email uh, from Calendly confirming the new event that has been scheduled by your lead. You will find here all the information for the meeting. So who's attending, the time, the date, and everything you need to know for that meeting to happen. The other option we have set for our flow is when the user chooses to speak now to an agent. So if I click here on speak now, Ilaria has joined the conversation because she was online and a text box would open here so that I can type anything. I'm going to say hi. And from the other side, from Landbot in the chat section, Ilaria will be able to answer me and then we will have a live conversation. So again, type here, hi, Ilaria here. Um, how can I help you? Uh, okay, send it. And let's see how it looks like for the user. Um, if I click here. All right, so this is how he will see. And then he can just um, continue answering. Um, I wanted to know dot dot dot. And so it goes. This is how the human takeover happens in Landbot. If the user chooses to speak to an agent, but there are no online agents at the moment, the flow will just continue and trigger the other blocks we set after the human takeover block. So as you can see, there are no online agents at the moment and I can choose the other options. And what happens um, behind the scenes is that it triggered the Slack notification block that will send us all the information from this lead that wanted to speak to an agent. And we will also receive an email notification because of the send an email block in the your team mode that we have set, um, sending all the information from this lead to ourselves. So as you can see here, I have the variables and everything is perfect. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching this series of videos and hope to see you in the next one. Bye.